Today's lesson is dialogue focus: a rainbow of colors. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And today we are talking about colors. You know those different hues of things that we can see: blue, red, orange, yellow, purple, and stuff like that. Do you do you have a favorite color, Helen? I don't really have a favorite color. I think it depends on what the color is for. Am I going to wear it, or am I going to paint my apartment with it? It mm, depends.、Yeah. I guess that kind of、uh, goes along with what we're talking about today. What colors go along with a living room? And of course, Jenny and Max are talking about how to paint their living room and what color to use. They probably are going to think about having a white wall. That's you know the safest. Thing to do, paint the walls white, but that's boring. We want colors in our apartment. We want to look forward to coming home to a nice, colorful apartment. So, yes, indeed, Jenny and Max are discussing colors. So, let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to their discussion right now. The first part: a rainbow of colors, discussing colors. Jenny comes home from work one day and goes into the living room. To her surprise, her husband Max is staring at the wall. Honey, I'm home. Is everything okay? Sorry, I was lost in thought. What's on your mind? I was just thinking that it would be nice to paint the walls in here. White might make the room look bigger, but it feels so cold and sterile. Color would add some life to the room. It is the living room, after all. What do you think? You've got a point, especially since our furniture is mostly gray. What about painting it a nice soft shade of blue? Light blue has a calming effect, so I think it would be better suited for a bedroom. Not to mention that blue and gray are both subdued colors, so it wouldn't help liven things up. What color would you prefer? I'm not sure. I think I'll know it when I see it. Let's go to the store tomorrow and look at paint samples. Students decide to drop this course because what the professor teaches is sterile. 学生们决定退选这堂课，因为教授教的内容了无新意。而 sterile 除了有单调的意思之外，还可以指无菌的，所以可以说。Standard hospital rooms are usually sterile in design and always sterile in terms of hygiene. 典型的医院病房通常设计上了无新意，而就卫生而言也总是无菌的。再来，我们看到的单字是形容词 subdued， 指颜色、光线、柔和的、不强烈的。像是 fancy restaurants tend to use subdued lighting to create a romantic atmosphere. 高级餐厅通常运用柔和光线来打造浪漫的气氛。接着，我们看到一个片语 liven up， 代表使点点点活泼起来、生动。例如 ，During the gym class, the teacher told her sleepy students to liven up。在体育课上，老师叫睡眼惺忪的学生打起精神来。又或者说 ，We livened the party up by playing some fun games。我们玩了一些有趣的游戏来炒热派对的气氛。All right, it's time for us to discuss the first part of today's lesson. It's dialogue focus, a rainbow of colors. Of course, a rainbow already has a lot of colors. But、uh, we're discussing all sorts of colors here, especially if we're talking about what color to paint our living room. That's right. Jenny and Max are discussing colors. What colors to paint their living room? Now it's really important to choose the right color when painting the walls in your home because colors can affect your mood in many ways. They can make you feel peaceful, angry, irritated, or happy, and so it's important to choose the right color. Now Jenny comes home from work. 
and she goes into the living room, and to her surprise, her husband Max is staring at the wall. Staring at the wall. What's wrong with him? Is he daydreaming? Is he spacing out? Jenny's done with work. She comes home. There's Max in the living room, staring at the wall. It just keeps looking at the wall. Jenny says, "Honey, I'm home." And then she sees Max staring at the wall, and she asks, "Hey, Max, is everything okay? Are you all right? What are you doing staring at the wall like that? Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Did you have a bad day or something?" Right. And Max was so busy staring at the wall and thinking about what he was thinking about that he didn't realize Jenny had come home. So he sees Jenny, and he's startled. Startled, he says. Sorry, I was lost in thought. Now, what is startled? It's when you feel surprised or suddenly frightened because somebody else did something or something unexpected happened, like making a sudden movement or a loud noise. For instance, my cat often startles me by jumping out of the closet when I reach for a piece of clothing on the hanger. Cats do that. Those little devils—they're always up to no good. Your cat startled you.、Uh, we don't have a cat at home, though, so I have no cat to startle me. But here, Max is startled when Jenny says, "Honey, I'm home. Is everything okay?" And oh, you scared me. You startled me. And Max says, "Sorry, I was lost in thought. I was thinking about something, and therefore I was not paying any attention to other things." And Jenny asks, "What's on your mind?" Max replies, "I was just thinking that it would be nice to paint the walls in here. White might make the room look bigger, but it feels so cold and sterile." Sterile or sterile, you could pronounce it that way as well. Sterile usually means, at least、uh, in medical terms, it means、uh, the germs have all been killed, and something will not harm you.、Uh, of course, you want to have sterile medical instruments before an operation. But in this particular case, sterile means something quite different. It kind of means boring, without life. Uh, with no color, so yes, indeed. If we paint the walls white, yes, the room will look bigger. But still, white is a very boring color. It's just kind of cold, like snow, and it's sterile. And yes, we shouldn't consider using white. Although a lot of people do, it's the easiest decision to paint your room white.、Uh, what、uh, color is your living room, Helen? My living room is white, in fact, because I didn't want to go through the trouble of picking a. Color. Color. So I have a white living room that doesn't really remind people of anything. Right. Well, in、uh, our living room、uh, where I live,、uh, most of the walls are white, but one wall has some、uh, wallpaper on it, which is kind of a light orange color. So that's kind of an accent there, which we'll get to later on. But、uh, indeed, Max does not like the idea of painting the walls white because. It would be so cold and sterile in that room. He says color would add some life to the room. It is the living room after all. What do you think? So yeah, I agree. If you add some color, it would add some life to the room. It wouldn't be so sterile like a hospital room or something like that. It would actually be a room where you feel alive. Right. The living room is the place where families, where people gather and they talk and they do things and they have fun. They spend a lot of time in the living room. So you want the living room to feel lively. Not like a place where you want to go into and rest and feel drowsy or depressed. Indeed. So yes, it's the living room after all. It means we want to have some life there in the room. So hey, let's consider some colors. And if I were him, maybe I would consider maybe a bright orange, or maybe some kind of a shocking pink color, or something like that, or electric blue. That would be kind of cool. But、uh, maybe those colors are a little extreme. Maybe they'd like to have something a little more conservative. And Jenny says, "Well, you've got a point." Yes, indeed,、uh, Neo Dali. That's a good point there.、Uh, what you said makes sense. That makes sense. It's logical, especially since our furniture is mostly gray. So yes, they bought furniture and they decided to get a gray color. Gray is nice because it doesn't look as dirty as some other colors. 
Sometimes I wear gray suits, for example, because they don't get so dirty. If I wear my white suit, my goodness, it looks dirty in less than five minutes. Right, gray is a good color actually for sofas and couches because they're neutral. The color is neutral and it doesn't get dirty very easily. You wouldn't want a white couch. I think that would get dirty within a day. I don't think I've ever had a white couch before, but in any case, yes, the furniture is mostly gray, and so yeah, we should probably add some color to the living room. And Jenny makes a suggestion here. What about painting it a nice soft shade of blue? And Max says, "Well, light blue has a calming effect. That's true, but I think it would be better suited for a bedroom. Since light blue makes you feel calm, it might make you feel sleepy as well. So it's more suited to the bedroom where you're supposed to go to sleep, go to bed. Not to mention that blue and gray are both subdued colors, so it wouldn't help liven things up." So Max has a good point. He says that both blue and gray are very dark, very calming colors. So these colors are not going to do a good job in making the living room more lively. Right. So subdued just kind of means as soft. It's not as bright. It's not as vibrant. Not as lively. You might feel subdued after a long day at work. You're kind of tired, and you don't really want to think about too many things. So you feel kind of subdued. But also, if we're talking about lighting or color, it just means it's not as strong, not as severe. So here, Max says that yes, light blue is kind of a subdued color. And that would not liven up the room.、Uh, here we've got the phrase to liven something up, to make it more active, to make it more exciting. Right. When you liven up something, this something could be like a party or a room. You make it more interesting or exciting. For instance, music can liven up a dull party. Right, so if somebody's、uh, playing some music on the stereo, it's maybe some old records or something like that, and someone says, "Oh, put that stuff away. Let's liven this party up with some hip hop or something like that, and get everybody on the dance floor and liven things up." Well, Jenny asks Max about his preference here. What color would you prefer? What color would you like to paint the living room? And Max doesn't have a particular color in mind, so he says, "I'm not sure." I think I'll know it when I see it. Let's go to the store tomorrow and look at paint samples. And that's what they're going to do. Go look at some samples in the paint store. So let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen first. Selecting a color, Max and Jenny arrive at the home supply store and go to the paint section. Look at how many choices these color swatch books have. It is a little overwhelming, isn't it? Why don't we ask an employee for advice? Let's ask him. Excuse me, can you help us with something? Sure. What can I do for you? We're looking for a paint color that will help our living room look less cold and boring. Do you have any recommendations? Here, I brought some pictures. Well, the good news is that your furniture is a pretty versatile color, so not many colors will clash with it. We want something bright and cheerful. You could go with a light green, one that reminds you of spring. I was thinking something warmer, something that really pops. Then I'd recommend a rich orange. How about this one? If you think it's too bold, you can just paint an accent wall. I like it. Should we be bold? Let's go for it. Second part, we see the adjective overwhelming. 有令人不知所措的或难以承受的意思，像是 new hires may find the workload overwhelming at first, but they will soon become accustomed to it. 新进员工一开始可能会觉得工作量不胜负荷，不过他们很快就会习惯了。而 overwhelming 除了以上的意思外，还可以指巨大的、势不可挡的。举例来说。Elisa received overwhelming support from her friends when she tried out for the school play. Elisa 参加校园话剧选角时，她的朋友给了她强力的支持。另外，这个字去除字尾的 ing 则可以成为它的动词 overwhelm， 指令人喘不过气来或使无法招架。所以可以说 ，Returning to the office after several days away, Vernon was overwhelmed with work. 休假几天后再回办公室。
Vernon 被工作压得喘不过气来。接着是单字 recommendation， 这个字是名词，指推荐或建议。例如 ，My parents gave me some recommendation when I was hesitant about which department to major in. 我的父母在我很彷徨，不知道要主修什么时，给了我一些建议。而 recommendation 去除字尾的 a t i o n， 则成为它的动词 recommend。我们可以说 Ralph's doctor recommended that he exercise more. Ralph 的医生建议他多多运动。最后，我们看到形容词 versatile， 指万用的、多功能的或多才多艺的，像是。This jacket with its removable sleeves and removable lining is very versatile. 这件夹克的袖子和衬里都可以拆下，相当多功能。又或者说 ，Sarah was a versatile actress, able to take on any role with ease. Sarah 是个多才多艺的演员，能毫不费力的饰演任何的角色。Okay, it's now time for us to discuss the contents of the next part of our lesson. They are choosing or selecting a color. They want to pick out a color for the living room. Max and Jenny arrive at the home supply store and go to the paint section. Now, when I was growing up in a small town in the Midwest of the United States, we just had one paint store. If you needed paint, you went to the paint store. But nowadays, if you want to buy paint, you're probably going to go to a home supply store, which is quite large here in Taiwan. Of course, you've got B and Q. That's similar to Home Depot in the United States. If you want to do some household repairs. Paint the living room, or get some new carpet, or something. You will go to a large home supply store. Right, stores like that are very big, and you can find everything you need for your house. You can、uh, find things for the kitchen, the bathroom, paint, paint brushes, patio furniture, basically everything. All sorts of stuff, yeah. Even toilets. Yep. Okay, let's move on now and see what Jenny says. Look at how many choices these color swatch books. Have color swatch books. Those are like books that have basically small samples of the paint colors. Right. They're usually very thick, and they're little books that have little samples of each color that's available. And、uh, based on those color swatch books, you can choose the color. You can put the swatch against the wall and see whether that color might look good on the wall that you want to paint. Might be kind of hard to tell with those little samples there, but Max says, "Ooh, it is a little overwhelming, isn't it?" So yes, indeed, these color swatch books offer all sorts of colors, hundreds of colors. So he's overwhelmed. If something's overwhelming, it's just kind of too much. It's too much to think about. You get kind of confused. It makes you tired. So it's overwhelming, and you just don't know how to relax. My goodness, I can't decide. With all these choices, right? Overwhelming is used to describe something that exists in such great amounts or has such a strong effect that you don't know how to react to it. For example, I could say John found the workload at his new job quite overwhelming. He didn't know how to deal with all the work he had to do. A new job can be very overwhelming indeed until you kind of、uh, know the ropes a little bit and、uh, get used to it. But again, he's saying the choice of colors is very overwhelming. Jenny says, "Why don't we ask an employee for advice? We can't decide ourselves because there's there are so many choices here. Let's、uh, get somebody to help us here." So Max sees an employee and goes to him, or maybe gets the employee to come over. He says, "Let's ask him." And、uh, Max asks the employee, "Excuse me, can you help us with something?" The employee says, "Sure." What can I do for you? Jenny says we're looking for a paint color that will help our living room look less cold and boring. We don't want it to be cold and boring and subdued. We want it to be lively. Do you have any recommendations? Here I brought some pictures. So here we've got the word recommendation. That's a countable noun. It just means something. That someone would suggest to you because they know about these things. Yes, can you give me a recommendation? I could ask that about Helen. You know all about Italian food. Can you give me a recommendation for a good Italian restaurant in Taipei? 
That's right. And here, Jenny is asking the employee about recommendations for colors that would be suitable for their living room. And Jenny shows the employee some pictures of their living room. And the employee says, "Well, the good news is that your furniture is a pretty versatile color. Versatile, versatile. You can pronounce it both ways. That just means it's flexible. It can be used in lots of different situations. You could be a versatile actor, for example, if you can act in action movies or dramas. That means you're multi-talented. You have lots of talents. So it's versatile. It can be used with lots of different colors. So." Uh, not many colors will clash with it. Here, clash、uh, refers to when colors don't go well together. They clash. They look bad together. Right. Patterns can clash. Also, for instance, if I were to wear a striped shirt with a polka dotted pair of shoes, I would probably look like I have clothing that clash with each other. That would not be good fashion sense there. So yes,、uh, the gray furniture will work well with basically any color. And Max says, "Well, we want something bright and cheerful. We don't want something boring and cold." And the employee has a suggestion here. You could go with a light green, one that reminds you of spring. So maybe light green would be the color of grass or something like that. Right, light green would be the color of grass or the color of some tree leaves. It's a pretty light and airy and joyful color. Very natural, kind of outdoorsy kind of color. It could remind you of the spring. Of course, spring is when life starts again. Max says, "Well, I was thinking of something warmer." Something that really pops. If we talk about warm colors, we tend to think about yellow, orange, and red. And the employee says, "Well, then I'd recommend a rich orange, not just orange, but rich orange, kind of a bright orange." How about this one? If you think it's too bold,、uh, you can just paint an accent wall. Accent wall I mentioned before. One wall in the room that is one color, and all the other walls are a different color. Right. So the employee says, if the rich orange might be too much for the entire living room, you might want to just paint one wall in the living room that color. So the other walls might be white or a lighter, more subdued color, but one of the walls in the living room could be the rich orange. Yep, the accent wall, the one that kind of accents everything, just kind of、uh, provides some kind of、uh, supplement to the other walls. And Jenny says, "Well, I like it. Should we be so bold? Should we be so daring with that rich orange wall?" Max says, "Hey, let's go for it. Let's do it. What the heck? Let's see what happens." Orange can be a very bold color. Hopefully, they won't regret their decision. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation. Let's turn things over now to the Chinese teacher. Good morning, students. Good morning, everyone. 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 To our surprise, Henry broke up with his girlfriend. 让我们很惊讶的是 ，Henry 跟他女友分手嘞。好，那么对话里面的 Max 想要把家里客厅的墙油漆一下。Jenny 有提议蓝色，可是 Max 觉得浅蓝色有镇定的效果，比较适合卧室。那接着他就说了 ，Not to mention that blue and gray are both subdued colors, so it wouldn't help. Liven things up. 更别说蓝色和灰色都是比较不强烈的颜色，没有办法来增添生气，让客厅看起来更有活力。好，那句子里面的这个 liven up 就是指使什么活泼起来啊，使什么生动。那我们这边另外要介绍的是 not to mention 的用法。Not to mention 就表示更别说是什么，更不用说什么了。那它常常会摆在肯定句的后面。其实有时候也会接在否定陈述的后面啦。好，我们来举个例子 ：The bakery makes delicious breads and cookies, 
Not to mention its famous cakes. 那间烘焙坊做的面包啊和饼干都很美味，更不用说还有他们家有名的蛋糕了。好，那在对话的最后，店员有推荐说要把客厅漆成亮橘色，这算是蛮大胆的颜色哎。那么 Jenny 很喜欢这个点子，他就问 Max 说要不要大胆尝试。Max 就回说 Let's go for it。好，那这边我们就来学 go for 的用法。第一个呢是指说接受、同意，像是接受某一个建议啊，或是计划等等。例如 ，We asked the salesman if he could give us a discount. But he wouldn't go for it. 我们问那个销售员可不可以给个折扣啊？可是他不接受。好，那么第二个意思是表达选择，像是嗯、hmm, ，I think I'll go for the cheesecake. 我想会选那个 cheese 蛋糕。那么第三个意思是表达喜欢，用来表达被某人或被某事物来吸引，像是 I don't really go for that kind of music. 我不太喜欢那种音乐。好，然后还有第四种用法，你可以表达努力争取。我们常常会用 go for it 来表达放手一试、大胆一试，或者是努力争取。像对话里面就是这样的用法，例如 Stop hesitating, just go for it。不要再犹豫了，努力去争取就对了。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Startle. I accidentally startled my friend when I tapped him on the shoulder. Overwhelming. Many children find their first day of school overwhelming. Clash. Can you tell me if this shirt clashes with these pants? Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.